Muturi ogo tura esha, ngarara esha. Tura tura narua esha, ngarara esha. Muka kwe goshara esha, ngarara esha. Goshari vya neiri mosha, ngarara esha. Eruga no kuria esha, ngarara esha. Yes, there once lived a man whose name was Muturi. And indeed, he lived up to his name. For he was a moturi, a blacksmith by profession. He was really good at what he did. And in his hands, metal would turn into the most beautiful things. Pots, pans, necklaces, rings. It was not easy work. And sometimes he and his fellow blacksmiths would be gone away from their homes for many days. Looking for raw materials crafting their products, looking for a market where they could sell their goods. But well, such were their lives. When the event of this story happened, Muturi had left his wife pregnant with their first child. And as he hugged her, he had promised to be there in time to take care of the woman and the child before it came. But days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, and months turned into more months. And still, Muturi was not back. And every day, the woman would look into the distance, longingly, hoping that the new day would bring her husband with it. And one evening, as she was resting in her hut, she heard heavy footsteps approaching the compound. And she was very happy, for surely that must be her husband, she thought. And as heavy as she was, as tired as she was, she stood up as quickly as her soul and body would allow her. And with a big smile on her face, went to the door. But when she saw who was standing outside the door, the smile just faded. For outside was not her husband, but instead there was a big man with big hairy arms and big hairy feet and a mop of long hair going down his back. And he had one big eye right here. Yes, he was an ogre and the ogre was carrying a bundle of firewood on his head. And when he saw the woman, he dropped the firewood with a big thud and said, Woman, may you fall down and die like that bundle of wood. The woman was shocked. But the ogre, even without waiting to see what the woman would do, went into the hut and began making a fire. <sighs> the pregnant woman was so scared. Surely, the ogre was making plans to eat her up. What could she do? And she wondered, even if she ran away, just how far would she have gone before the ogre caught up with her with its giant steps? Resigning to fate, she went back into the hut, where she was pleasantly surprised, for the ogre was making some oji, some porridge. And once it was ready, it served the porridge in two calabashes, gave one to the woman and one for itself. And as the woman sat there wondering, could it be that this was an angel in disguise come to help her in her final days before delivery? The ogre took the calabash and with one big gulp, <sighs> both the porridge and the calabash disappeared into its big mouth. And then, taking the porridge that the woman was taking, said, Wadaga, Garia, if you don't want, I eat it for you. The ogre used one hand to hold the hair on the side, revealing a big mouth at the base of the neck. And with another gulp, the second calabash of porridge disappeared. Well, and this happened for many days. The ogre would leave in the morning, 
go out in the forest, come back with um, wood, drop the wood outside, casting the woman that he should fall dead like the wood. And the woman who was expecting began becoming thinner and thinner. And finally, when she was left with almost nothing to eat, she went into her granary, which was now empty, and took some castor oil seeds that she had kept there. And when the ogre was away, she would take the castor oil seeds out and dry them. And sometimes birds would come and eat some of the seeds. And she would also eat some of them. And she never chased away the birds. And one day, well, after the baby had come, and this continued for long, as she was drying her, 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 her castor oil seeds, as she was drying her castor oil seeds, her child, a baby boy, in her arms, wondering when her husband was going to come home. One of the birds, which came day after day after day to eat the seeds, asked, Woman, every day you come outside here and you lay your castor oil seeds, and every day I come here and eat, and you never chase me away. And you never insult me. Tell me, is there something I can do for you? And the woman said, well, if I send you, will you go? And the bird said, all right, let me eat to my field, and then you can send me wherever you want. And the bird ate, and ate, and ate more than it had eaten before. And when it was full, it asked the woman, tell me, where do you want to send me? And the woman said, bird, fly, fly like the bird you are. Fly as far away as you can. And if you see a group of blacksmiths somewhere, sing to them this song. And the bird did exactly that. It flew and flew and flew for many hours without stopping. And it flew right into the afternoon through the night. And the next day at around noon in a forest, it saw a small clearing. And in the clearing were people. Men working with their hammers. And the bird thought, hmm, this surely must be the blacksmiths. And the small bird perched on one of the branches of the trees in the small forest and began to sing. And she sang this song over and over and over again. And the blacksmiths who were there working thought, Ah, this bird is making so much noise. And every once in a while someone would pick a stone and throw it at the bird. But the bird would just fly, perch on another tree, and begin to sing its song. And what older man one older blacksmith listened and said, maybe, maybe this bird has a message for us. And the other blacksmiths put their tools down and they all listened. And the bird sang. Yes, this is what the bird was saying. Blacksmith, doing your work, do it quickly. For your wife has given birth, assisted by an ogre, which knows how to cook and how to eat. And the older blacksmith asked, Which one of you left a woman pregnant? And Muturi, who was among the blacksmiths, knew it must have been him, must have been his wife. And 
he trembled in fear and wondering how the wife was coping and immediately gave the tools and what he had finished to the other blacksmiths and he set off for home and the next day at midday he was at his house and he found the wife outside laying out the castor oil seeds the child in her arms thin and emaciated and Muturi's tears fell seeing the wife almost starving to death and he held the child in his arms and cuddled her and the wife in a big embrace went into the hut made a fire cooked them some food made a bath for the wife and as they ate they discussed what they were to do in the evening before the ogre came Moturi hid himself up above the fireplace in the rafters where firewood was kept. And as usual, the ogre came with a big bundle of wood and dropped it out of the big thad. And came into the house and as usual, made a meal, served himself and served the woman, ate his own food in one big gulp. <gasps> and then said, oh, waraga garea, if you can't eat, I will eat it for you. Took the woman's food and turned, lifted the hair at the back. And from high up in the rafters, Moturi had watched all this. The wife humiliated and he could not wait anymore. So when the ogre turned and lifted the hair to pop the other calabash at the head at the back of the neck, Muturi was ready. And with the sharpest of his spears, he threw it and stabbed the ogre right through the heart. And he shot his arrows and shot them and shot them until the ogre lay down dead. And Muturi came down from the rafters, took the wife, and the child and everything they thought of value in that house set off set the house on fire and went away to build their house in a different place and even now where i come from women never chase away small birds when they come to eat the castor oil seeds that they lay out to dry for they know that one of these birds saved one of their womenkind. Motoyo tura e shangarara e sha, tura tura narwa e shangarara e sha, mokangwe goshiara e shangarara e sha, goshiari dio neri mo shangarara e sha, neruga no kuriya e shangarara e sha.